Hey everybody, it's your neighbor Angel, and we're here with another episode of Stonecrest Weekly. We want to take a moment to showcase something that we're very passionate about. If you've been listening from the beginning, you know we, we used to add snippets at the very end of our show called The Forgiven, which is Bible scandals retold in a more modern setting. We've had a lot of stuff happen in this city. We've had fires. We've had young women lose their lives and traffic accidents. There's just stuff that's been going on. And we just thought we'd take a moment to decompress. It's Black History Month. We have some other stuff we're working on for you. But this week, we thought we'd drop you a little dose of The Forgiven, just so that you can experience some of what we want to bring to Stonecrest in addition to bringing you the news and the hot topics. So today, we're going to share with you Joseph and his brothers. And we titled this episode, Haters Gonna Hate. We hope that you enjoy it. We hope that you'll give us feedback on it. And most of all, we hope that you find something new and exciting to be entertained by. But before we get into it, let's get a word from our sponsor. Hey, neighbors. Our sponsor, National Sustainable Energy Group, has a special offer just for you. So check it out. National Sustainable Energy Group is available for all of your HVAC needs, including new units, maintenance, and repairs. But if you live in Stonecrest, they want to offer special pricing like new furnaces starting at $39 per month or new HVAC systems starting as low as $69 per month. On top of this, you will get a 10-year parts warranty, two-year labor warranty, and a one-year preventative maintenance plan. Call our friends, National Sustainable Energy Group at 770-871-0192 to schedule your free consultation today. Again, that's 770-871-0192 and tell them Stonecrest Weekly sent you. Please wear headphones for your best listening experience. Imagine knowing you were meant to be the leader of everyone in your life. You were elite in your home and held influence among your peers. At night, your dreams affirmed that all who were around you would one day kneel at your feet. Imagine your confidence rising almost to the level of arrogance and that you carried yourself as if your dreams were already a reality. You were smug for so long the inevitable happened, that is, people got tired of it. They grew tired of the favoritism imparted to you and purely infuriated by your taunting of how great you'd be. They eventually started to treat you poorly, hoping this would encourage you to change your behavior. But you, so full of yourself, you don't even notice it. You didn't notice your belittling comments and demeaning actions had created enemies in your own home. Until one day. Hey, Simi. Simeon. What? Look over there. Joseph is coming. Who told them we were here? I don't have time for him today. Me either. But we're supposed to be at the farm, not at this festival. You know he's gonna run tail back. Facts. So what are we gonna do about it? What are y'all over here talking about? Joseph is coming. Seriously? I don't got the time. That's exactly what I said. All I know is if this man tells on me one more time how I'm gonna be working for him, I'ma lose it. Calm down, Ashley. No, you calm down, Levi. He's always messing with me. Y'all will never understand what it's like to be an outside child. No, but we know what it's like to be loveless. I can't deny it. I'm tired of him too. Did you see the new coat dad bought him? I mean, that man gets everything. Wouldn't it be nice to teach him a lesson? and show dad that he has other sons, more worthy sons. What kind of lesson? A permanent one. Say less. Yes, 
And just like that, arrogance and naivety created an irrevocable hate. But let's clarify some things. All of the behavior I mentioned before wasn't really about you. I just needed you to imagine it. This story is about Joseph, a bright and handsome young man who was clearly the favorite of his father's 12 sons and the pure envy of all his brothers. Well, the envy of 10 of his brothers. There was one, Benjamin, who was too young to notice and too young to be a part of this story. So, back to Joseph. He made it a point to flaunt his special treatment and had no shame in sharing his dreams confirmed he would be the family's next CEO. Obviously, this did not sit well with his brothers, and like in many families where communication is poor and jealous competition is cultivated, alliances were formed. In this case, Joseph didn't have an ally in sight. His brothers plotted to take his life and would have if the elders, Reuben, didn't step in. Step in, step in. I need you guys to listen. Karma is real, and I'm not bringing death on my head. Ruben, I'm not backing down. I can't have him exposing us and pushing dad even farther away. I've worked hard to prove I'm a good son. I'm up at the crack of dawn, working that farm while he sits in the house under his mommy, eating cereal and pineapples. He's never even attempted to learn what it takes to run this place, but he just knows that he will be king of it. Nah, he gotta go. I hear you, Asher, but don't you think killing him is a little harsh? Man, I saw Sean from the countryside kill for less. But never his own brother. We're not doing that, Asher. Then what do you suggest? Look, we all know that one place where people just happen to disappear. Okay, Jules, I'm not mad at that, but you know he could easily slip away. Not if we lock them in one of the abandoned buildings over there. No one's gonna come and rescue them. Yeah, but I can imagine him screaming so loud that somebody's gonna get curious. Then we'll make sure he can't. Asher, man, put the knife away. Exactly. Hold on, y'all. I need to go make a call. All right, look, while Ruben's gonna make that call, let's go get Joseph. I wonder what's taking him so long to come over here. We spotted him over an hour ago. I'm sure it's a female. Or he's already seen us and is headed back. Nah, too many pretty faces around here for that. Well, I'm going to look for him. No need, bruh. What are you? Hey, who are y'all looking for? Hmm. Hey, Joe. Nobody important. Believe me. Okay. How come y'all didn't tell me about this festival? Oh, this festival? That you somehow made it to? Look, Dad sent me to the farm to check on y'all. And when I got there, everybody was talking about how you guys ran off. So here I am. It's sad the workers gotta do more because y'all ditched them. I know I'd be mad if I had to pick up for the slack of 10 grown men. You were free to stay and help since you were so concerned, Joseph. <laughs> you funny, Levi. Joe, why don't you just let us show you around town? You know, that sounds cool. I never really come down here. Maybe I'll see something worth Dad's attention. Look at you. Always trying to bring new ideas to Dad. I'm surprised you haven't dreamt about it already. Whatever. Are y'all gonna show me around tonight? Slap. To save you the anxiety, they went through with their plan. But Reuben wasn't really as in as he made it seem. He thought that if they locked Joseph in one of the buildings, he'd be able to come and save him later that night. But his brothers were on to him and made some decisions without his knowledge. Dan, do you still know Claude and them? Yeah, I know them, but I've been trying to step back since they on that trafficking mess. So it is true. Yeah, they're responsible for at least four of the last five disappearances. You know we can get in big trouble. Wouldn't it be terrible for Dad to lose 11 sons instead of only one? All 10 of us would go down if they ever discovered we had anything to do with Joseph in that abandoned house. Especially if he was dead when they found him. Don't remind me, I can't stand the kid, but he is our brother. Half brother. Man, you and I are half brothers, so what's the point? No man, what I'm trying to say is Joseph is different than us. 
Dad only had us because he thought he'd never have him. Do you understand? Don't you want your rightful place as a son? Who doesn't? Ruben is too scared to do what's needed. I'm not gonna lie. I'd rather not have blood on my hands, but that doesn't mean that we can't make sure Joseph is long gone from here. Forever. But still alive. You feel me? I am not doing this if I can't get nothing out of it. Dad's attention ain't buying me nothing new. Then name your price. Joseph is strong and healthy. Girls like him for some reason. So let's make a couple of bucks and get this cleaned up. And to think I was against human trafficking. My brother. There you have it. These men sold their younger brother for a few thousand dollars just because they didn't like how he talked to them. And poor Reuben, just when he thought he had made it back to save his brother, he saw Joseph handcuffed and pushed into a white tinted van. He began to run as fast as he could towards it, but the van quickly peeled away. He saw Joseph's new coat on the ground and all nine of his other brothers splitting the cash they had just received. I cannot mimic the pain and anguish Reuben felt. He cried loudly in that moment, but what was done was done. Now, it was time to create a scenario so their father would not send the largest search party known to man to recover his most loved son. To cover their tracks, they killed a stray dog and smeared his blood on the jacket and shredded it to look like it had been attacked. Their brother Gad had a connection at the morgue which provided a body to view and thus their tracks were covered or so they thought. Help! Please! Help me! Help me! Settle down there. You're gonna hurt yourself. Better yet. You're gonna get hurt, so shut up. I can't believe my brothers did this to me. I hope they all burn. Burn! God, why are you letting this happen to me? Please protect me. I know you gave me all those dreams. Why would you show me this if this is how it's all gonna end? Stop your crying. I just got your assignment. You're actually going to a good place, so take it easy. I don't want to have to knock you out. What is a good place to drop off a kidnapped person? God, just don't let me die. They were going to be transporting him to what is known as the Agency in the country of Idlestan. The agency got started by offering inexpensive labor for individuals trying to get back on their feet. It was once a legitimate business, but their popularity and demand was growing faster than their company expected. They got greedy and started working with human traffickers and justified the decision by saying the work they offered was better than the alternative for these stolen souls. They created a solid model of intimidation and mental ownership to keep their people in check. Unfortunately, they ran such a tight ship their customers were none the wiser. After Joseph went through the agency's so-called integration process, he was hired into the home of a top official and businessman, Jim Potiphar. Mr. Potiphar was a good man and treated all in his employ fairly and with respect, no matter how little their responsibility was. Hassan, I'm looking for someone to be my aide. Who of the new hires has shown promise? Hmm. Oh, oh yeah. Uh, the new yard boy is pretty innovative and he works faster than all of us. Look, he's cleaned up the grow, organized the workshop, and he figured out a way to irrigate the north side of the garden, too. Huh? Where it kept flooding and I was quoted 75 k to correct it? Yes, the very same one. I would like to meet him. Oh, no problem. You know, he's actually probably mopping the hall right now. I'll run and grab him real quick. 
Hey, Joseph, can you come here for a moment, please? Mr. Hassan, is everything okay? Oh, no, everything's good. Mr. Potiphar just wants to chat with you for a moment. Is he upset that I removed the dead plants from the grove? The disease could have spread to the other plants. Oh, no, it's nothing like that. Joseph, stop worrying and come on in here. Hey, Mr. Potiphar, this is Joseph. You know, the young man I told you about? Hello, Joseph. Hassan speaks very highly of you. Tell me, why should you come out the yard and be my aide? Well, Mr. Potiphar, first, thank you for the opportunity. But in my humble opinion, I should have never been in the yard. I've always been a leader. When I arrived at the agency, I was in great distress. Frankly, I should have never even been there. But I made peace with my circumstances because if I could survive that, I could survive everything. I never dreamed my life would be going this way, but I refuse to not be the best everywhere I go. I was born to be the best, and I will live my life as such. Very interesting. I won't ask how you ended up at the agency, but I will tell you this. If you work hard for me, I will allow you to buy out your contract early. Focus, and I will give you every opportunity to excel. Does that sound fair enough, Joseph? One thing I've come to learn, Mr. Potiphar, is life isn't fair, but it's better than death. I will always choose moving up, period. You got the job, Joseph. Thank you, Mr. Potiphar. You will not regret it. We'll see about that one, Joseph. This may be the beginning of something you will both regret. Regret, 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 regret. Thank you for listening to Haters Gonna Hate, the Joseph and his brother's story. This episode was sound designed and edited by Gaza. Judah was played by Rick Party. Levi was played by Marcellus Baseman Shepherd. Asher was played by Pharaoh. Joseph was played by Bumani X. Hassan was played by Dave Tolliver. Mr. Potiphar was played by Jordan Barossi. Ruben was played by Harlem. Dan was played by Lamont Thompson. Simeon was played by Boo and The Kidnapper was played by George Coleman. Thank you all for listening and catch you tomorrow for the scripture reading. The Forgiving Bible Scandals Retold Don't Crest Weekly